On behalf of the University, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you to this congregation for the conferment of degrees here in our Laraney Hall. Today is a very special day in our university calendar. It's a graduation day which makes it a day of celebration for our graduates, for all the family and friends, and for all of the staff of the university. In the United States, they refer to these events as commencement ceremonies, as they use them to signify the commencement or the beginning of a new journey, as opposed to an ending. And it's in this spirit that we also wish to celebrate graduations at Strathclyde. Now, in a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each of the graduates, as their name is called out, and they come up on stage to receive the reward. The capping tradition has its roots in ancient China, and it's recognized as a rite of passage and a mark of achievement. And for each of our graduates once capped, this also signifies that they are now part of a community of scholars at the University of Strathclyde that can stretch back over 200 years to the Scottish Enlightenment, so they've been very good company. At the close of graduation, we have a reception in a nearby Lord Todd building to which everyone is invited to come along and to celebrate. We also hope to have an academic procession from the barn over to the Lord Todd. This always depends upon the weather, but today I think we're going to be okay. In the meantime, I do hope that you enjoy the ceremony. And when you see your loved one come up on stage to receive the reward, I would strongly encourage you to celebrate. <laughs> These occasions don't come round very often, and we've got this hall all to ourselves. So let's make the most of it. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is open. And I invite Professor Douglas Brodie, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, to present our graduates to receive the rewards. Thank you. <clears throat> Vice Principal, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for Research in Politics, Fraser Macmillan. <laughs> for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in French and History, Beth Carroll. In French and Italian, Ryan and James Boyle. <laughs> Mary Claire McLean. In French and marketing, Jonathan Johnston. In French and Psychology, Christina Bell. In French and Spanish, Molly Patricia Fletcher. Anna Christine McLeod. Sarah White. In Human Resource Management in French, Stéphane Pinamonti. In Human Resource Management and Politics and International Relations, Rachel Nicholson. In Human Resource Management in Spanish, Matthew Alexander Ern. In Hospitality and Tourism Management in Spanish, Erika Lai Bov Moriva. <laughs> in Intercultural Communications and Global Business, Yu Sheng Men. <laughs> J. 
Cho Shi Ho. Ji Ho Ho. An Italian French, Louise Rachel Easton. In politics and international relations, Daniel Braby. Sarah Finlay. Louise Gray. Sorry, Louis Gray. Scott Martin. Charlie Murphy. Laura Anna Alexandra Ohela. Hannah Lina Purala. Ailey Nicola Shepherd. Casey Thomas Smith. Andrew Weir Tom. Lauren Toner. Charlotte Florence Elizabeth Winspear. Jane Catherine Grace Baxter. Amy Mary Burns. Andrew James Byer. Grace Cameron. Iona Alexandra Campbell. Prafraj Tranjja. Emily Davis. Mel Fabracano. <laughs> Billy Thomas Hogg. <laughs> Gillian McColgan. <laughs> Caitlin McDonald. Kerry McGowan. <laughs> Callum McGregor. <laughs> Katie McIntosh. <laughs> Laura Mary Murphy. Ian Fraser Sim. <laughs> Caitlin Smith. <laughs> Paul Smith. <laughs> Craig Swinney. Andre Vidyshenko. <laughs> Amy Elizabeth Blair. <laughs> Nick
Natalie McLucky. And in politics and international relations and economics, Francesco Bromo. <laughs> Ian Goldie. <laughs> Ross McClendon. <laughs> Shanna Khan. Vincenz Rishi Mayer. Patrick Daniel Skirving. And in politics and international relations and history, Freya Lillian Boa. Michael Canning. Charlotte Catherine Taylor. <laughs> Rachel Blair. <laughs> Eleanor Hazel Colloran. <laughs> Ellie Fulton. Sean Gilmore. <laughs> Hannah Leach. <laughs> Lewis John Monroe. <laughs> Neil Innes Ramsey. Jonathan Emmanuel Thompson. <laughs> and in politics and international relations with history, Sarah Jane Clucky. <laughs> ben Hunter. <laughs> Joss. Josh Vincent McGinley. <laughs> and in politics and international relations and journalism and creative writing, Georgia Louise Klein. <laughs> Madeline Watson. <laughs> Hannah Beck. Marco Gori. <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth Milligan. <laughs> Callum James Mitchell. <laughs> and in politics and international relations and law, Molly Ann Brooks. Grant Henry. <laughs> Lindsay Matheson. <laughs> John Methan Andrew Rodigan. <laughs> Shirley Scott. Sophie Ann Shields. <laughs> and in politics and international relations with law, Nina Francis Sofali. <laughs> in 
Politics and International Relations and Social Policy, Rachel Curry. And in Spanish and English, Lewis James Creechin. Marian Emilia Gio. Aidan Hutchison. And in Spanish and French, Francesca Goody. Freya Ann McMeekin. Erin Miller. Robin Clare Morrow. Lauren Emily Griffin. Daniel Hayes. Lucy McFadden. Callum Douglas Robertson. Shona Leong Sanger. Louise Stevenson. And in Spanish and Hospitality and Tourism Management, Erin Martha Burke. In Spanish and Italian, Louis Gary Blythe. In Spanish and Marketing, Carla Maria Nugent. And in Humanities and Social Sciences, Camelia Brazova. Sharon Hayes. Jordan Leckie. Megan McCall. Francis Patricia McGurlick. And in psychology, Hao Tin Leong. And in Spanish and marketing, Samantha Russell. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and most of all, Strathclyde University's newest graduates, it is my pleasure to once again welcome you to our graduation ceremony here in the Barney Hall. Quite rightly, our graduates have been centre stage, and I would like to begin my address by congratulating all of you once again on your academic achievements. Your hard work has paid off, and this has now been recognised 
in front of your families, supporters and friends, and also the staff who taught and supported you during your time at the university. We celebrate your efforts and your achievements. Very well done. Now, in a short while, at the close of graduation, you may be asked to join the academic procession as this leaves the Barony Hall. This invitation actually symbolises the fact that you are no longer students, but now full members of the academic community of Strathclyde, a community that numbers over 180,000 individuals. The class of 2019 is graduating at a time of considerable change in Scotland, in the UK and internationally and there is no doubt that challenges lie ahead for us all. However, as members of the Strathclyde family, you belong to a large, growing worldwide community with a shared ethos of tolerance and understanding and a desire to make a positive difference. I hope that the memory of today is something that will stay with you wherever you go and whatever you choose to do in life. We will keep in touch with you through our alumni team and I would ask that you also keep in touch with us. Let us know what you're up to, what you think about what we're doing at the university, and what you could do to help future generations of students. As graduates of a socially progressive university, you have a competitive advantage, having been equipped with the skills, know-how, and capacity to absorb knowledge, together with the ability to positively influence and shape the world around you. Nelson Mandela once said that education was the most powerful weapon you can, change, you can use to change the world. Do not estimate this power or your responsibility to use it well. In Scotland, we are fortunate in having a higher education system which is internationally respected and as a society, we are quite right to invest in it. Education broadens the mind and it creates opportunities for individuals and for society. However, education itself does not confer rights. The opportunities that education gives each of us also carries with it a responsibility to use what we have learned wisely and for the good of others. And a sense of duty should come readily to graduates of this university. As Strathclyders, we only have to look to the achievements of those who have gone before us for our inspiration. To John Anderson, our founder, who established this university for the good of mankind, to, to the world's first oil man, James Paraffin Young, to the missionary and explorer, David Livingston, and to John Logie Baird, who did such pioneering work on the development of television. In the present day, we look to Dame Ailish Angelini, a pioneer in Scottish justice as the country's first female solicitor general and later the first female Lord Advocate, and to Sir Tom Hunter, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Scottish history, and a philanthropist who has used his wealth to the benefit of others. I am sure that you've been given lots of advice on how best to plan your life. Some of this advice you will rightly ignore, some you may accept, but mostly you will have to learn for yourself. Robert Louis Stevenson put it well when he said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. Now, to reach this point in your life today, each of you will have travelled a different journey. For some, the path will have been relatively smooth, and for others, this may have been more challenging. However, I am certain of one thing, that none of you would be here without the encouragement of your supporters or families. They have picked you up when you've been down, they have encouraged you when you've needed it, and many will be here today, proudly watching as you cross this stage with broad smiles and the odd tear in the eye. Now they are celebrating today, not just because you're almost off the payroll, although there is something in that, but because you carry with you their hopes, their wishes and confidence for a successful career. For the past half hour or so, their applause has rung in your ears as you each in turn cross the stage to receive your awards. I would now like to invite all of our graduates to show their appreciation for the support received 
from their supporters and families. I touched earlier on some of the key figures who have helped to create and shape the University of Strathclyde. And you can tell a lot about the values of an organisation by looking at its roots. Strathclyde traces its lineage back to 1796 when John Anderson brought it into being, the only Scottish university founded during the Age of Enlightenment and embodying the Enlightenment principles of reason, tolerance and equality. John Anderson's belief in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using this for the greater good is the motivating force which gives Strathclyde University its momentum today. In many ways, he was ahead of his time. He advocated in the 18th century the education of both women and men of all classes. This vision is just as important today. And as a socially progressive university, we want the talents of our students to be developed to the highest level for the benefit of society. This can be seen in our pioneering law clinic where our students provide support and representation to people who cannot afford legal advice. It can also be seen in our technology and innovation centre, which is transforming the way in which we collaborate with business, industry and the public sector to bring global competitive advantage to Scotland. And this is a tangible sign of the university's commitment to world-class research and ensuring that the outcomes have maximum benefit to society and to the economy. We are a university for innovation, seeking breakthroughs which will address the most pressing challenges facing the world. Through new and effective medicines, meaningful approaches to climate change, new technologies to address energy poverty and food poverty, by informing policy that addresses public need and makes for a vibrant and fair society and by offering much needed independent insight into complex political, economic and social issues. These represent a small sample of the many contributions being led by our world-class staff and students in taking new knowledge and using it to solve problems in industry, in the classroom and in the boardroom. We continue to strive to enhance the student experience and invest in our campus creating facilities like our £31 million Strathclyde Sports Building to support fitness, health and well-being, our new £20 million District Energy Network, which is reducing our carbon footprint, and we are investing over £60 million in a new teaching and learning facility in the heart of the campus. And we are halfway through transforming our campus with a £1 billion development programme. Other highlights over the last year include the faculty's professor, Elisa Morguera, who recently won Strathclyde University's largest ever research grant. A £20 million project bringing together 50 international partners to transform the world's response to increasing plastic pollution, rising sea levels and overfishing. Professor Graham Reid and Professor Richard Rose, both of the School of Government and Public Policy, were elected as fellows of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. Dr. Laura Kelly and Dr. Chardeep Mann, both of Humanities, and Jimmy Paul from the Centre of Excellence for Looked After Children, were all appointed to the Royal Society of Edinburgh Young Academy of Scotland. And Dr. Catherine Eschel of Government and Public Policy won the Britta Baumgarten Memorial Prize for the best article published in social movement studies. Now these are just some of the many contributions being made by our staff and students across humanities and social sciences. And Strathclyde is being increasingly recognized as a place where things happen. And this is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies and organizations looking to recruit the best talent to drive their businesses forward. Our success is in no small part due to the collective efforts, talent and commitment of our staff. The 3,900 colleagues who deliver our vision as a leading international technological university. Like me, they are very proud of your achievements. All of our students learn how to be innovative, enterprising, and creative, 
and they make a real difference when they go out into the workplace. So wherever your career takes you, always remember that as a Strathclyde graduate, useful learning carries with it responsibilities that go beyond academic scholarship. And finally, let me offer my sincerest congratulations to you all once again on your achievements. And I hope that you enjoy the remainder of what is a very special day. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that now concludes the formal part of this afternoon's proceedings, which I hope you've enjoyed and you'll take away very many happy memories. I would remind you that we have a reception over in our, our Lord Todd building to which everyone is invited to come along. At this point, I normally look to the back of the hall to see if the weather's any good, but I think it's safe to say that the weather has remained pleasant enough that we can have an academic procession. And I'll take this opportunity to invite Strathclyde's newest graduates to join the academic procession. And ladies and gentlemen, if you could wait till the academic procession passes and then follow us over to the Lord Todd for some refreshments, we shall see you there. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is closed.